It's early in the morning in Rattenbor National Park. Uh-oh. That's the roar of a male tiger announcing his presence. But it is not the call of T7, the resident male. T-17, a three-year-old female, is probably in heat and the cause of the commotion. Males often allow females to hunt in their territories, hoping to mate with them, sometimes attracting competing males. T-7, the large dominant male in this area, is on a mission. He doesn't look happy. He will not tolerate any intrusion into his territory, especially when an eligible female is present. Just to make sure that the boundary is clear, T7 will mark his territory with a combination of urine and scent gland secretion. Males also place scratch marks on trees and leave droppings in strategic locations. Since the intruder is probably T28, a much younger male from a neighboring territory, there is no contest. T28 will leave. Satisfied that the threat is over, it's time for a bath, a drink, and some needed relaxation. This has been a trying morning. When I think of India, I think of the Bengal tiger. When I think of Bhutan, I think of Buddhist monasteries perched precariously on the edge of a Himalayan peak. Come join us as we travel to the lands of tigers and temples. Our journey begins in the Shambhal Nature Reserve to photograph the gharial, a narrow-snouted crocodile endemic to India. Next, we travel to the holy city of Varanasi to observe the nightly religious ceremony on the Ganges River. Bandavar and Rathambur are two of the best places in the world to see the magnificent royal Bengal tiger. Flying to Bhutan, takes us to the Himalayan land of the Thunder Dragon, whose violent past contrasts with its forward-thinking peaceful present. The entire journey lasted almost four weeks. This is not the place for an afternoon swim. Weighing in at 500 to 800 pounds, and 10 to 15 feet in length, the marsh crocodile is a prehistoric animal, changing little in the past 65 million years. Hunted almost to extinction in the 1970s, captive breeding and protection has brought the population back to about 10,000 animals. We are on the Chambal River, a nature reserve located close to the city of Agra, home to the Taj Mahal. Famous for its bird life, egrets, herons, painted storks, Indian skimmers, and many other species make their home here. Ha, ha, ha. 
Each year, Arctic geese make the perilous migration over the Himalayas from Russia to spend their winters in the warm Indian rivers. But we did not come here to photograph birds. We came to see the gharial, a crocodile species endemic to India and Nepal. Hunted for their fine skins, these wonderful creatures were declared almost extinct. But conservation efforts and captive breeding programs brought the population up to the critically endangered level. Surviving almost entirely on fish, their long, narrow snouts offer very little resistance when snapping up fish in the water. Just outside the nature reserve, is the ancient temple complex of Bhattishwa, home to more than 100 temples dedicated to Lord Shiva. Lined along the crescent-shaped curve of the riverfront, Bhattishwa is an important part of the Hindu pilgrimage circuit. It is also an important site for devotees of the Jain sect. Legend has it that Siddhartha rested in this cave during his early pilgrimage during the 7th century BCE, an important event in the founding of Buddhism. The history of India is the history of Hinduism, which took root here about 1000 BC. And there is no better place to experience the essence of this ancient religion than in the holy city of Varanasi. Sunset over the Ganges finds people lining the ghats amid the constant glow of the cremation fires. Scattering one's ashes on the river ensures nirvana and an end to the cycle of death and rebirth. Located on the west bank of the Ganges River, it hosts a nightly temple ceremony, which is open to all who wish to attend. is the dominant male in Bandavgar. We have been waiting all afternoon for him to emerge from his day-long rest in this ancient cave. He is fat from a recent kill and is making the rounds of his huge territory, more than 30 square miles. Tigers are solitary animals, and the size of the territory depends on the availability of prey, water, and cover. The B stands for bacha, which means baby in the Hindi language. Sharing a territory with B2 is a young female with newborn cubs. She is hiding the cubs about a mile away, but needs to get water each day making her somewhat accessible as she crosses the open grassland on her way back to her cubs. Female tigers reach maturity when they are about three years old. Males a year or so later. The average litter size is two or three cubs, but most do not make it to maturity. Having lived in the presence of vehicles her entire life, she is oblivious to the crowd of onlookers eager for a close-up photo. In fact, tigers have been known to use the vehicles for cover when stalking prey. Mm -hmm. 
Rantambore is a jewel in the crown of India's tiger parks. Deriving its name from the hilltop fortress, which stands like a silent sentinel. It covers an area of over 150 square miles, embracing a network of lakes and rivers. The park supports a huge population of bird life providing ample photo opportunities during the many hours spent waiting for a tiger. The sambar, India's largest deer, is often seen feeding in shallow water. Spotted deer, known locally as chital, often associate with langur monkeys warning each other of approaching predators. Sheltered by the mother, the baby Hanuman Langler has a very human-like appearance. The park is rich in prey for the more than 40 tigers that reside here, up from a low of 24 in 2005. Poaching and killing by villages was a serious problem but funding from the Indian government to provide incentives to the villages and to install surveillance cameras has been quite successful. The tiger has always been a creature of hypnotic power and fascination, both in myth and reality. Ironically, it is this mantle of respect that is threatening to lead it down the path to extinction. Poaching brings up to $10,000 for a tiger, whose parts are sent to China to be ground up for consumption as an aphrodisiac. Today, there are less than 1,400 tigers in all of India, down from about 2,000 less than 10 years ago. That's T-17, the young female who provided the drama for the opening sequence. She is one of several young tigers who will be relocated out of the park to build biologically diverse populations in other parks. The Kala helps the staff keep track of her. Unlike lions, which can go without water for many days, tigers need to drink. During the dry season, tigers often go to the same watering hole. So we are here to film T7. Having sated his thirst, he will go off to spend the rest of the day in a shady spot. Tiger viewing is a popular attraction, both for tourists and locals. With only a handful of good tiger reserves in all of India, advanced reservations are necessary. Both Bandavgar and Ratambur limit the number of park-owned and operated vehicles to about 40. Routes are randomly assigned each day to spread them out. Tigers are accustomed to the vehicles and view them as part of the landscape. In fact, tigers enjoy walking on the road, which feels soft to their sensitive feet. During most of our game drives, tigers were not sighted. And on many occasions, the tiger was too far away for good photography. In Bandavgar, elephants can be hired for the morning game drive. Although they can go off track and get close to a tiger, filming from the top of a fidgeting elephant is not ideal.
This beautiful animal is a young female leopard named Lakshmi, which means goddess of money in the Hindi language. This is a very special day for Lakshmi. She is being released to the wild after spending two and a half years of her life being raised by the local park director. The leopard baby we can see, we found about two and a half year old before, before and when she's about three months old and her soldier uh, knee joint is not working well. So mother left her because the rule of the wild, fittest is survival. So maybe mother thinks she not survive in the wild, so she left her. Mr. Prabhu Dayal keeps Lakshmi here at his house, but has been training her to make a kill and to survive in the wild, encouraging her to stay out in the forest on her own for several days at a time. We bought the live chicken, but meat and other food is provided by local hotels and restaurants. Saying goodbye is always difficult, but Lakshmi is in heat and needs to be a wild leopard. And maybe when she had a mate, good meeting with a wild leopard, then maybe she'll stay in the wild, she'll not come back when she has a baby. We're hoping for a nice life for her. Good luck, Lakshmi. The kingdom of Bhutan sits high in the Himalayan mountains and is one of the most remote nations on earth. It is also one of the smallest, with a population of less than 800,000 people. But that figure does not count the nearly one million non-citizens of Nepalese or Tibetan origin. This peaceful nation, which just opened its borders and communication channels to the outside world, has a long feudal history. In fact, the countryside is dotted with medieval fortresses, testament to the many battles with armies coming over the mountains from Tibet, as well as from within its own borders. The country was not truly unified until 1907 under its first king. The present monarch is fifth in this line. This is a Buddhist country and the flag of yellow and saffron represents the twin governing entities of king and religion. In 1908, a British expeditionary force from India was defeated and Christianity was officially banned. But that law is not presently enforced. At the end of 2006, the fourth king abdicated his throne and formed a constitutional monarchy. The government is guided by a unique set of principles dubbed the Gross National Happiness Index. There are four tenets. Good government, sustainable growth, environmental preservation, and promotion of culture and heritage. Nice. Archery is the national sport of Bhutan and every village has its own archery range. But these local residents have set up a practice range just off the road. High-spirited competitions, usually accompanied by a banquet, are part of all festive occasions. Using bamboo bows, Teams of archers shoot at targets less than one foot in diameter from a distance of more than 300 feet. 
It takes years of practice to excel at this sport. Dart throwing is also popular in Bhutan. Although this is also a male-dominated sport, more women are participating in it as Bhutan sheds its medieval past and enters the 21st century. If the family can afford it, one son is sent to a monastery to learn the teachings of Buddhism. This is an honor that brings merit to the family and a blessing to the child. In fact, a monk tax, which is no longer in effect, was introduced in the 16th century to promote the religious education of young boys. Classes are held in the morning but the young students are encouraged to form small discussion groups in the afternoon. This is the midday break. Once they reach mid-teens, they will either go for further training or return to their homes. Vows may be renounced and a monk may return to an ordinary life at any time without social stigma. We are climbing the steep path up from the Paro Valley to visit the most famous monastery in Bhutan. The vertical gain of 2,700 feet to an altitude of 10,000 feet took us more than two hours. Horses can be hired for those not able to make the trek. Tiger's Nest Monastery is revered as a holy place. It was built on the spot where, in the 8th century, Guru Rinpoche, the great Buddhist master, landed on his tigress after flying from India. Here he meditated in a cave, high up on the cliffside. The shrine in the cave was slowly enhanced with additional buildings until this monastic temple was formed. Destroyed by fire in the 1990s, the temple was completely rebuilt and reordained. Tourism in Bhutan means visiting the many zhangs or fortresses that dot the countryside. Since religion has always formed an integral part of life in this Himalayan kingdom, each fortress contains a monastery. Most date back to the 13th to 16th century and are still active centers for monastic life today. Prayer flags are ubiquitous in Bhutan and are hung outside homes, bridges, hilltops, and places of spiritual importance. After one dies, prayer flags are believed to guide the soul of the dead away from the netherworld. Prayer wheels also bring good fortune to all mankind. Turning a prayer wheel symbolically refers to the first teachings of the Buddha when he set the wheel of the law in motion. Inside each prayer wheel is a piece of paper containing a sacred text. This is the weekly Paro market where locals shop for food and come to socialize.
the local staple is red rice, although white and brown rice varieties are also available. Bhutanese food is not particularly spicy. But beware! Hot chili peppers are often served as a vegetable side dish. Nearby is the daily market, where both tourist items and local supplies are available. A disturbing sign in this isolated country is the fact that toy guns have become very popular with young children. Welcome to the rest of the world. These craftsmen are restoring an old monastery using traditional woodworking methods. No nails are used and little use is made of power tools. In fact, most new homes are constructed in this manner, preserving the uniqueness of the rich Bhutanese culture. A salient feature of Bhutanese architecture is their unique window design, found on almost every building, from 13th century monasteries to modern homes and commercial buildings. attending the annual dance festival. This four-day event honors the life of Rinpoche, an Indian saint who lived in the 8th century. He brought Buddhism to the Himalayan regions of Tibet, Bhutan, and Nepal. This celebration of ancient Buddhist culture, in which both monks and lay people express spiritual beliefs through the drama of dance, dates back to the 12th century. The festival takes place in the courtyard of the Rinpung Fortress, originally built in the 17th century to defend the Paro Valley. Stadium seating is erected on the hillside to accommodate visitors from the surrounding region, who come to rejoice in the religious festival and to socialize with family and friends. While India races to become a major global industrial nation and Bhutan struggles to control the negative effects of economic growth, the Bengal tiger is fighting for its very existence, with less than 3,000 animals left in the entire world. We hope you have enjoyed our visit to this part of Asia, a unique experience combining a chance to photograph India's unique wildlife with a peek at the spiritual, cultural, and physical nature of the Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan. <laughs>